Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to do another question and answer episode. And some of my younger viewers have some questions about pistons and rods and some particulars about them. And I don't have a set of pressed piston pins in stock right now, but I do have a full floating setup. And that was the first question is what was a full floating pin? So let, let's go over a little bit here about pistons and rods and just the pieces that make them up for the people that are either new to automotive, new to engine building, or you know, new to the hobby, the profession, whichever the case may be. And this is a piston for an upcoming project we've got going on. And what we have here is just a, now this is a ceramic coated forged flat top Molly piston. These were brought in by a customer. This is your wrist pin, your piston pin, your wrist pin, whichever you want to call it. This is a connecting rod. For those that don't know, it is an H-beam rod. Uh, one of the questions I got was, how come one side's flat and one side's chamfered? When you put the pistons in an engine, V6, V8, you end up with two rods on each journal of the crankshaft. This chamfer goes towards the side that's up against the crankshaft. This flat side goes up against the other connecting rod. This chamfer is because when you cut the journal into the crank, there's a little fillet in there. And this makes room for the fillet and also traps a little oil and helps lube things up. Now the initial question was, what is the difference in a press pin combination and a full floating pin combination? Well, if you can see it in the photo here, you notice there's a bronze bushing in the little end of this connecting rod. And this is where the piston goes. In a full floating combo, your pin goes in here. Now these haven't been fit yet because this is a brand new set. It may not, there it goes. All right, it's going to go ahead and go. By fitting, there's a clearance in here. And it's usually like a thousandth, half a thousandth, somewhere in that territory. And these haven't been fit yet. So we're lucky that this pin actually goes in there. Sometimes it don't until you open it up a little bit. Now, the piston goes into the rod. And then the pin goes in and holds it all together. Now, inside the piston, and you can probably see it better on this back side. Well, you can see it over here too. There's a groove in there. And what that groove is for can be an E-clip, a circ lock, circ clip in the case of this piston, or a spiral lock. Now I don't have any spiral locks that are not already installed and I don't want to pull them out. So I'll touch on what those are in another video because I'm sure we'll probably run into some before the year's over. But basically what happens in a full floating setup is the rod goes in, the pin goes into the rod through the piston, and there you go. You have an assembled rod assembly, rod and piston assembly. And then your little cert clip goes into this ring in here and locks it so the pin can't fall out. Now the reason it's called full floating is it can float back and forth the amount that those little cert locks will let it move, but it's not gripping the rod or the piston. When it's in the rod, it can spin. And when it's in the piston, it can spin. And that helps reduce wear, gets oil in there, and just goes for more longevity and lets you turn a little more RPM, frees up a little horsepower, because once again, anything that takes friction off frees up horsepower. Now, that's the quick version of it. I won't get into balancing and all that. Now, if this was a regular press fit connecting rod setup, you'd sit the piston in what's called a rod heater and it would hold the piston in position and you have to make sure your valve pockets are matched up with the right side of rod bearing for the cylinder you're putting them in. Then there's a little electric heater that sits right about here and, and you can google connecting rod heater or uh, piston pin installation heater and find it out on, on the net there and see what one looks like. If I had one here, I'd do one real quick and show you, but what it does is it heats the little end of the rod up, and when it's red hot, you already have your piston pin part the way inserted, and you have a stop on this side that's half and half, 
and when you stick the heated rod in, you push the pin in, just like I just did for this one, and I'm not going to go ahead and shove it all the way through there. Push it in until it stops, you wait a second, and as the rod cools, it grips, and it's called a press fit, it grips the pin, and then the pin can't move until you press it out of the rod. And, it, and it's gripped in here. Now what happens there is as the rod goes around in the piston rocking, and I'm beating up my pin here. What happens there is as the rod's going around in the engine, it's twisting inside of the piston. But it doesn't need the clips or the spiral locks because it's heat, heat shrunk or press fit to the big end of the, or the little end of the connecting rod. And that's the difference in the two. Most factory installed engines in the past come with heated connecting rods or press pin connecting rods. And what can happen over time is they wear, the rod can actually, the pin can actually work its way out of the rod and move over and start dragging on the cylinder wall. In a regular high performance application where you got a full floating pin, the clips can come out, break from time to time. Spiral locks are really the best option, but like I said, I don't have a set here right now or I'd show them to you. But that's the difference in a press fit and a full floating pin assembly. So, hope that answered all the questions. Took care of the one on the rod end here for why it's chamfered on one side and flat on the other. Uh, this is an uh, this is an H-beam style connecting rod. This one happens to be made by Eagle. You can see it going by. They're not sponsoring this. This is not a sponsored video. But they are going in a little project that we have cooking here sometime this year, hopefully. So, as always, practice your skills. Learn a new one. Work those skills until their craftsmanship. You never know how far they'll take you. If you got any questions or like this here, you wondering about something, please ask. I love to hear questions from the viewers. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this has been Fab Race Mod Repeat. Have a great day.